can a plane fly on a treadmill? The question that broke the internet in 2010. But it is still a relevant question today because it is an interesting thought experiment and we have the answer now, finally. So stick around for a practical review. Now, this question is a lot more complicated than what it sounds. Really what it boils down to is you have to get to the intent of the question. Now, if the intent of the question is, can a plane still fly if a treadmill is canceling out its speed? Another way of saying that the forward movement, can a plane still fly if the treadmill is canceling out its forward movement? boiled down to can a play flight standing still is what that question boils down to and the answer of course is no a plane cannot fly standing still but if the question is if a plane is on a treadmill that is going backwards the same speed needed for flight can it still fly that is to say a plane needs to reach 62 miles per hour in this instance to be able to take a lift and it is on a treadmill that is going backwards 62 miles per hour. Can it still fly? And the answer to that question is yes, it can. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and go into uh, a little bit more detail into this question. So the first thing we have to take a look at is a physics experiment. So I'll be very as, as quick as I can with this, but let's delve into a little bit of physics. So we have George here. George is in the middle of his house and he's experiencing a force on Earth that we all feel called gravity. And this gravity is a downward force that is going into the ground, or at least it's downward relative to where we are. We have a ground perspective. We are on the ground and we are seeing things fall downward. Now, if you were to have a floating perspective, you would see things being pushed away from you. So if you were looking down and you were floating in the air and everything was falling downward, I'm seeing everything pushed. So we have this pull from a ground perspective and push from a floating perspective. Now let's take that same house, let's take George and let's put him into outer space where there is no gravity. So he's in outer space floating around and the question becomes, how do we create artificial gravity? Well, there's a couple different ways we could do that. And one of the methods is we can put rockets onto the bottom of the house. And by doing so, you create a thrust going upwards, AKA a push force. The house is being pushed upwards and that creates a down force inside the house, which we interpret on earth as gravity. So everything inside the house goes back down to being normal and it is a downward force from that perspective. Now let's go ahead and do it the opposite way. Let's put a rocket on top of the house, attach a rope to it and shoot the rocket upwards. Well, that house is no longer being pushed from below. It's being pulled from up high, but the result is still the same the pull from above is creating a downward force inside of that house. And that downward force makes everything go back to normal. And it is a pull force, artificial gravity. So just to sum up those two, we have a push from below creates a downward force and a pull from above also creates a downward force. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, it's going to be in a good visualization tool for a little bit later on when we actually talk about the airplane coming off the treadmill. Simplified in one, uh, one little uh, box there. Push going up creates a downward force and a pull going up creates a downward force. Now, let's get to a car. We put a car on a road, takes about 15 horsepower in order to get that car to move uh, at, a, at a steady rate of 62 miles per hour. Now, how does it do that? Well, the engine turns the wheels, the wheels interact with the ground and creates a friction. And it is propelled forward via a push force because of the friction that is caused by the wheel on the ground. So it is literally pushing itself forward. And that's how we get a forward moving uh, for the car. 
Now, if we take that same car and we put it on a ice surface where there is no friction points, and then we go ahead and turn on the engine and push it to 62, we are still gonna get that push force, but there's no more friction on the ground. It is just spinning its own wheels out because it can't grab the friction in order to propel itself forward. Now going back to the road, let's take that let's take that road and build a treadmill. So we have a treadmill on that road now, and the treadmill is going 62 miles an hour. And that 62 miles an hour is going backwards. It's working against the same uh, direction that the car was going. So the car is going to go ahead and start up and it's going to go 62 miles an hour and it's going to use that push force. But because that push force is equal going forward to the treadmill going backward, it's not going to go anywhere because the car relies on a propulsion system that is primarily based on friction. It needs to be able to grip things in order to move forward. Well, it's gripping things to move forward, but what it's gripping is moving backwards. So it's going to stand still. The car ultimately moves at zero miles per hour from a standing observer's standpoint. Now, this is a little important too, because this is perspective, right? If I'm outside looking at this situation, I see that the car's not going anywhere. From my perspective, the car's moving zero miles an hour. From the car's perspective, it is moving 62 miles an hour, right? Because it is trying to get itself to go, 60, it, it's ramped up to go 62 miles an hour. So it thinks it's going 62 miles an hour relative to itself. Relative to the treadmill, the treadmill, an observer on a treadmill that's standing on that treadmill at one point, but is being moved backwards because of the treadmill, he's going backwards at 62 miles an hour, and the car is going forward at the speed of 62 miles an hour. So really, to a standing observer on that treadmill, the car is moving 124 miles an hour because it's the 62 that it's going backwards and the 62 that the car is going forwards. Now, that doesn't necessarily matter for uh, this scenario, but that's another fun, uh, fun with a lowercase f, uh, thing to think about. Now let's get this plane going. So this plane needs about four to 400 horsepower in order to get itself to 62 miles an hour. Now, four to 40 to 400 uh, depends on the size of the plane, and at least that's with all the research that I've done. Uh, and with 62 miles per hour is the typical takeoff speed of a smaller aircraft. So that's why we're going with 62 for this whole time. Now, let's take a look at how a plane makes itself go forward. So we have the car that uses its wheels and the friction of the ground to propel itself forward. How does a plane move forward? Well, a plane pulls the air that is in front of it and pushes it behind it. Now, because the, with the propellers, now because the propellers are attached to the aircraft, the plane itself, it is being pushed along as the wind in front of it is being pulled. So the wind is in the front right here. It is being pulled into the propeller, it is being pushed on the outside, and it is creating a pushing force that for the aircraft itself, for the actual airplane itself. The airplane is being pushed forward because of the propeller's ability to pull the wind and pull it behind. Now, it's not just that wind that's pulling it forward. There's also outside, outside wind that's going around. But that is essentially how a plane will go and take off. Now, I'm not an expert in actual... Uh, aerodynamics. Um, I don't propose to be one. I know that in order to create lift, uh, there has to be an interaction with the wind going over and under the wing. And dependent on the angle that the wing is will give it more or less lift. And there's also drag involved. And then there's gravity pulling it down. There's a lot of that stuff going on. Uh, I am not uh, uh, super pervy to any of that, but for this example, we don't need to be. All we need to know is that once we hit 62 miles an hour, this plane is going to be able to take off and it's going to be able to fly away. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go over what we were talking about before about the downward force and the push and pull. Let's go ahead and apply that to the plane now to make it a little bit easier to visually see what the plane is actually doing. 
So if we take this downward force, this push and the pull that we were talking about earlier, and we take it and we turn it onto its side, we get a push coming one way, a pull going the same way, and the force of whatever's being applied to is going backwards against it. So it's the same as right there, it's just, it's just flipped on its side, okay? Now we can take this concept and introduce it to the plane itself and the propulsion of the plane. Now, we can take the push of the plane is equal to a pull from the other side because this plane is being pushed from the back end by the wind. The wind is pushing the plane itself forward because the propellers are pushing it backwards, are pulling it backwards, so the plane itself is being pushed. So if we create that equally, it's going to be a pull to the other side. Now, visually, how do we represent that? Well, let's take the same rocket and the same rope that we had before. This rocket is now pulling this airplane, which is the same as it being pushed from its own propeller. Now, it's still going, undergoing the same exact motion. The wind's going through, it's pushing it away, and that push has been now visually turned into a pull by the rocket so that we can understand and see it a little bit easier. Now it's going to go and act the same way as the plane normally would in that circumstance. Let's go ahead and take that plane and put it on the ice that we had from the car. Now when we put that plane on the ice, it still has that pushing motion, but let's go ahead and convert that into a pulling motion so we can see it a little bit easier with our eyes. We have the rocket pulling the plane. Everything aerodynamically is working the same exact way it would, and it's going to continue to go. Now there is no friction on the surface of the ice. Whereas the car was spinning out because it needed the friction of the wheels in order to propel itself forward, the propulsion of the plane is generated by the propellers pushing the plane forward, pulling the air, pushing the plane forward. And we are visually representing that with a rocket attached to the front of the airplane. So it does get lift. Now, here we go, let's get to the treadmill. So we're gonna put the treadmill on the road here, we're gonna make it go backwards 62 miles per hour, and we're gonna put the plane on top of the treadmill. Now what is going to happen? Well, let's go ahead and put a hand on the treadmill so that the plane doesn't go anywhere. We're gonna keep the plane exactly where it is, we're gonna hold it still so that it can't go anywhere when we turn on the engines of the plane. So now, the engines of the plane are on. The engine is pushing forward, the propellers are pulling the wind, and the engine, the plane itself is being pushed forward, which is equal to the pull of the rocket ship in front. It's still not going anywhere because we have the hand on the plane itself. So if we let go, oh, no, a quick note, the pull force is completely independent of the ground. The ground doesn't matter because it is being pulled from in front. It has nothing to do with the ground. So when you let the plane go, it's going to get that pulling action from the, from the rocket. The ground speed moving backwards doesn't matter. It only matters for the wheels if the wheels blow out or not, if the wheels are able to handle, because technically the wheels at 62 miles an hour, the wheels are going 62 by the plane and it's going negative 62 by the treadmill, which means that the wheels are going 124 miles an hour. So if the wheels can sustain 124 miles an hour and not blow up, then the plane will take off normally. Now, what does that mean? If we make the treadmill go a thousand miles an hour backwards, and we hold on to it, but we still have that push and but we still have that pull force rather, what is the plane going to do? Because now the treadmill is greatly overwhelming the ability of the plane or the, the miles per hour needed to, for the plane to take off. Well, we know that the pull force is independent of the ground. So when we let that plane go, it's going to continue to move forward and take off. So whether you have a plane on ice, 
you have it on a road, you have it on water, assuming you have, you know, the flotation necessary underneath it to keep it from sinking into the ground, uh, sinking into the water. Or if it's on a thousand mile per hour treadmill, the plane is still going to pull forward and go up because the pull force has nothing to do with the ground. The pull force is moving through the atmosphere, even when it's on the ground. And that's how it's propelling itself forward. So the question becomes, we go back to the beginning. The actual question is, if a plane is on a treadmill that is going backwards, the same speed needed for flight, aka 62 miles per hour, if this 1000 was a uh, was a 62 and this is 62 technically they are the same speed the planes moving forward 62 and the treadmills moving backwards 62 so the question becomes if a plane is moving on a treadmill that is going backwards the same speed needed for flight can it still fly and the answer as you can see is yes because the propulsion of Oh, I'm sorry, because the method used to move the plane is unaltered by the speed of the ground. The speed of the ground doesn't matter. It could be going with the plane, it could be going against the plane, it could be going to the side, assuming you have wheels that can move sideways with the side of the ground so that it doesn't just fall apart. Um, the speed of the ground doesn't matter because the force that is using, the, the force that the airplane is using is to be able to be pulled forward independent of the speed of the ground. Anyway, I know that that was a long uh, explanation. Um, I, I appreciate you sticking around. Uh, this is the most concise that I am able to make it. It is a very tricky and difficult question because it really matters on what the intent is. If the intent, again, is if a plane is... Uh, being canceled out, the plane speed is being canceled out by the treadmill, which wouldn't happen, but given the scenario that a plane is being canceled out by the speed of the treadmill, can it still fly? Can it move forward? Can a plane fly standing still? No, it cannot. But if the plane is on the treadmill and it's moving at the same speed that the treadmill is moving backwards, can it still fly? Yes, it can. Anyway, that was a very long explanation. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you guys have ever had this uh, question come up, uh, I'm, I'm really curious as to uh, see what kind of responses are out there. I don't know if this question is still coming up anymore, but it did the other day for me. So uh, I thought I would help out and describe uh, in an alternate way how you can think about the push and pull force of an aircraft. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, have a good rest of your day.